I have Alexandra Farrington with uh, Pyomte. Uh, and uh, we have some fantastic uh, spirits with us today. Uh, some mezcal, some rums. Some rums. So, uh, you know, mezcal and tequilas are really, really popular these days. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people don't know, but um, all tequilas are mezcals. Yes. Right? Yeah. But not all mezcals are tequilas. Exactly. And from there on, it gets really confusing <laughs> for me. So, <laughs> Alexandra, tell us. Um, the difference between those two, yeah. and also, uh, you know, uh, the production methods, and uh, what's this rum doing in uh, Mexico? I mean, a lot of people <laughs> do, have not heard of any uh, rum in Mexico, yeah. right? So let's talk about that, you know, in a couple um, of minutes. So tequila is very popular, made from blue over agave. Uh, it can be made in many different states, but mostly you see it from Jalisco. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, all different variations, ages, different sorts of things, big mm -hmm. companies, small companies. Uh, and then you get into mezcal, which can be made in many other states, 12 different states. But 12 most different states. what you see is from Oaxaca, from one state of Oaxaca. Okay. And there are many different ways to make mezcal. Some people, you know, distill it in a tree trunk. Some people do like tree trunks. Big, yeah, maybe they tree. Just tree. In tree trunks. It's <laughs> really? there. It's there too. And clay pots. Uh, some do traditional, um, like copper pot uh, distillation. Oh. Yeah. Um, and but because it is 12 different states, you don't see a lot of the other ones. And we're from Michoacan. It is a very mountainous region. It's very beautiful and lush and verdant. Um, agaves grow everywhere there. Um, and traditionally, for mezcals that you see from Oaxaca, it's mostly espadín. And we have many different. Espadín uh, is a type of agave. Is a type of agave, yeah. So, so like with tequila, yeah. you'll see the blue rubber agave. Espadín is the more common one that you'll see around Oaxaca. Okay. Um, and so, if it's growing there, you're going to distill it. Uh, our most common one is cuprieta. It's a little bit different. Cuprieta. Uh, which is really cool, but we have so many variations of megas, different types of agaves called yeah. mege, okay. um, which is really, really exciting. And everything we do is still strength, and we do it in a still strength. Now, what does still strength mean? So that means that when it comes out of the still, so we do double distillation mm -hmm. uh, in locally hammered copper uh, pot stills, okay. like these cool pines, like wood and copper together. All right. Um, very old school, you know the way it's it's how it's been done for right. hundreds, thousands of years. Okay. Yeah, it's a heritage spirit, truly. Okay. Um, so it goes. So distillation. Yeah. Do you think distillation was also done for thousands of years, or yes. is that something really? Yeah, okay. for right. sure, right. definitely. Um, and and truly, the, there there's evidence that before the Spanish got to yeah. Mexico, the Filipinos were when they were going around mm -hmm. the world and yeah. they were bringing their type of Filipino clay stills to clay stills. To, to that area. I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is really really cool. Yeah. Um, where were we? So, so yeah, no, I mean, listen, you know, um, I think when we talk about these spirits, uh, we lose people right at agave yeah. or uh, maguey, you know. Mm -hmm. So for tequila, the maguey or the plant, the agave species has to be blue weber agave, blue weber agave right? Agave. So you can use that for uh, making uh, mezcal too. We can, but we, we that, actually you have do that. Of other okay, yeah, you so do, we actually okay. do. So we take blue weber agave because it grows all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, and we take it, and this is basically how tequila would have been made before mm. industrialization. You right. know, we can't, we're not going to call it that because we're not from the area. Yeah. Um, and we do, we don't do it for that way, but it's the way that we do all of our spirits. Um, it's cooked underground for five days. Mm -hmm. um, it's not super heavy on the smoke or anything. Um, it's open top fermentation, um, so just like wild spontaneous fermentation. So you're not using any yeast strains. Nope. Like you no, know, we have over fifteen hundred whiskeys, but I think. I can't even think of a single one which is um, natural fermentation. Yeah, it's hard to do. It's yeah. hard to do it's because you can't do. control it. You can't control the taste, the flavor, exactly. you know, on a consistent basis. Yeah. So are you also saying that a lot of these tequilas are going to have uh, mezcals are going to be inconsistent or they're going to be have a variety? Uh, I mean, they're going to have the, a little bit of variety, but it's so it's so indicative of the place um, and like how it's always the been done. Covenant, so, the terroir. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so as, as uncontrolled it is, it's like, you know, controlled chaos. Right? So, you know, yes. it's, it's, okay. There's beauty in that, in the variations. Right, um, the sense you know, of place is always going to stay. Exactly. So if, if you take the same maguey, but uh, distill it in one place, and then you take the um, uh, same maguey, but in a different place using the same exact process, because the different. yeast strains and other, other things are different. Yeah, different. for okay. sure. There'll be cool. variations there. And that's something that I really love about our line is because it's the production is done the same way throughout. Mm -hmm. You really get that expression of what is Michoacan, what are the different maguey, how do they taste? Yeah. Um, and even from like our entry level, the cubriata to the chino, like one is semi-cultivated. We work with farmers there locally, mm -hmm. and then the chino is wild. 
So well. just that okay. different thing. Same yeah. exact agave, but one right. is grown in rows, and one is, you know, <laughs> harvested off the side of a mountain. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. just having that small thing and the, the beautiful variation in that is so cool. Right. Okay, yeah. so uh, I know our time is limited, so we are going to go to um, rum because uh, rum. you know yeah. a, lot, a lot of folks don't know about uh, mezcals, but even less know that uh, there's that tons there's of there's uh, rum great in Mexico. Rum. Yeah, rum from Mexico. yeah. So uh, what's, what's long history of sugarcane growing in Michoacan specifically. It's uh, like I said, lush, beautiful, um, the most beautiful blueberries, avocados, all sorts of mm -hmm. amazing products come there. But sugarcane has grown there for a very, very long time. Um, and the sugar cane production is actually very much in decline. So when we built this distillery, I think it's probably only one of three left in the whole state, which is crazy. Um, and we do it in a way um, of like Martinique, like more of a French style. So it's fresh sugar cane that is uh, the okay. agricole one. So agricole style, yeah. in which you're, you're basically uh, taking fresh sugar cane juice yep. as opposed to molasses or processed exactly. uh, juice yep. uh, to make uh, rum. Yeah, which is so cool and so interesting yeah. and so funky. Right. Um, we have uh, our molasses based one too, the Blanco and the, and the H. Um, but the agricole rum, you really, again, get that sense of place of like, what is Mitro Like, not, what is the, the spirit of this place, which I think is so beautiful. Right. Very, very beautiful. So, uh, the sugar cane itself, um, mm -hmm. it's sort of a grass, but are they, yeah. uh, there's so many different varieties of sugar cane? Yeah, cane? there are. Are you using certain particular ones, or how does so that work? So, there are a few that are, like, indicative to Mexico, and I don't, it doesn't even have a botanical name. It's just like it's, it is it's what there. is grown yeah. there, yeah. and it's always been you know grown there. <laughs> right. um, but it is a grass, but it's a grass that you know is like 15 feet tall, and it's really hard to harvest. It's yes. such hard work; it's, it's you know, wild. And even the sugar cane press, they're you know, pressing by hand okay. through this yeah. thing. It's really really cool yeah. to see. But it's a lot; it's a labor of love right. for these for these spirits for right. sure. Right, 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 right. So you have three types of uh, rums that you produce yes, at this point. Uh, yes, yeah. the agricole and the blanco, which is a molasses based. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, and then the eight Fantastic. So, so I, I know you don't have a tight schedule. We don't have time to taste uh, today for uh, for our customers, but hopefully we can uh, get you back in uh, sometime I in the future. Let and me know. All right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.